Hey everybody, Tyrant Rex here once again. I'm gonna bring you a little bit of an update on my situation here. Uh, my Let's Plays will be stopped for a short while until I can get my desktop up to my new location. I moved to go back to school, be going back to school for business, learning accounting or finance. You know, people always need to know where their money's at. So we're just gonna continue with the gaming nature of this channel and I'm going to talk a little bit about the E3 press conferences. I know I'm a little bit late but I just my laptop broke and I didn't have time to record this so I'm going to record it now and post it up here. Uh, E3 press conferences. Let's start with the easy one, Nintendo. Nintendo didn't come out with a press conference this year but they presented all their usual games that are basically being Nintendo and uh, it's going to be games Mario, Mario Kart, Mario Tennis. It's going to be ports to the 3DS, uh, remake of Wind Waker, and they're also going to be having new Zelda games come out. So that's a Nintendo side of the field. That's all you're going to get from Nintendo is Nintendo games pretty much and a couple of third parties. That was their big thing. That's their thing every year. It's just Nintendo. If you like it, you're going to buy it. But let's talk about the two uh, big dicks of the of the E3. Let's talk about Microsoft and Sony. Um, this year was pretty much a pissing match between the two, but we're going to talk about each system and we're going to talk about why you should or should not buy each system. And first thing we're going to start with today is how each, came, each system came out when it came to being a gaming platform or how each company came out and ha how they are catering to the gaming community. So we're going to start with Microsoft, and ha I have a few notes, you know, just written down of, their, of what they announced during their press conference. So at the Microsoft E3 press conference, they announced Metal Gear Solid V, World of Tanks, Max, The Curse of Brotherhood, Dark Souls 2, which I'm super excited for. I love Dark Souls. I love Demon Souls. I just love all those games, and I have no doubt that they will be super games. That they're going to be awesome to play. It's going to be Dark Souls Two is going to be difficult, and you're going to just want it if you've already played the first two. Rise, Son of Rome, Killer Instinct, Sunset Overdrive, Forza Motorsport Five, Minecraft, Quantum Break, D4, Project Spark, Crimson Dragoon, Dead Rising Three, Battlefield Four, The Witcher Three, Wild Hunt. Halo and Titanfall. So, let's go through this lineup. This is a very small lineup for a press conference displaying for a for a system that is supposed to have all the exclusives on the first week. You think Microsoft could secure all the exclusives, but their lineup seems pretty tight this year, and it's kind of wor worrisome for the company. Like, if you were going to look at it, because what they got lined up, what they decided to show were a few fighting games, a beat em up and a bunch a bunch of, you know, redone games, a bunch of sequels, sequel, sequel, sequel. You got the you know, Metal Gear Solid 5, you got Dead Rising 3, Battlefield 4, Witcher 3. Now, sequels are great. I mean, they continue the storyline of game that you already know, but there's no real innovation here. There's no change in the in the direction. There's nothing and a lot of their games that they, that they were hyping at their press conference were just shooters, which I understand that shooters are very popular these days, but it, eventually you're going to oversaturate the market with shooters. But they decided to cater to these markets at their press conference. And what this means is that these are going to be the games they're going to focus on opening week. So if you like these games, you're going to go buy it. That's just all it's going to be. Let's go look over at Sony's lineup for E3, and I'm going to go through all their all their announcements: PS3, PS Vita, PS4, everything that they're that they're, they're coming out with. I just I did it with the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One just now, and that's that that's what I'm saying. Yeah, they got two systems, and that's all that they have for the lineup at the press conference. So let's go over to Sony and see what they got debuting. They got Batman Arkham Origins on PS Vita and PS4, Counter Spy, Destiny of Spirits, Doki Doki Universe, Killzone Mercenary, Tearaway, God of War Collection, Final Fantasy X and X2, 
Flower, Dead Nation, Walking Dead, 400 Days, Last of Us, Puppeteer, Rain, Beyond Two Souls, Gran Turismo 6, Grand Theft Auto 5, The Order, 1886, Killzone, Shadowfall, Drive Club, Infamous, Second Son, Knack, The Dark Sorcerer, The Witness, Transistor, Don't Starve, Mercenary Kings, Octodad, Deadliest Catch, Secret Ponchos, Raised Dead, Outlast, Oddworld, New and Tasty, Galaxy, Diablo 3 port, Final Fantasy vs. 13, and they also had a slight announcement of Final Fantasy 15 being in the making. Kingdom Hearts 3 in development, Kingdom Hearts HD collection, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Watch Dogs, NBA 2K14, Elder Scrolls Online, Mad Max, Destiny. <sighs> Sony came out real big this year. They ended up bringing all, uh, bringing out all their guns. All the ammo, they threw it out there at the press conference. They they came out as the company that you would want to buy from this year at the press conference. Why did they come out like this? Well, they were, t they were touting themselves as the gaming platform in the next generation. I think they did a really good job. They offered a lot of variety in what they were presenting. Sure, it was only little short clips of each of their games, but... If it was, if you can, you can have a 20-minute clip of Metal Gear Solid 5 being cut down to like 10 minutes of just a bunch of fanning about on a fucking horse, I mean, I, I would prefer just to have those little small clips. But they got Batman Arkham Origins, which is going to be an exploration kind of Grand Theft Auto map kind of thing, but it's going to be a big beat 'em up game. And they got the HD co God of War collection coming out for for. PlayStation 3, they got Killzone Mercenary for the, for the Vita. They got a bunch of remakes, HD remakes, which I know you're going to say, I just harped on Xbox for saying that they had no innovation. But remakes weren't their big thing. It was the, They put it out there, but it was almost always in conjunction with a new game that was already in development. Kingdom Hearts 3, for example, the HD remakes is just so it can go with Kingdom Hearts 3 being in development. A couple of sequels in here, Grand Theft Auto V, Gran Turismo. If you like racing, if you like driving, if you like crime, you got your you got your fix right here for you know PS4 exclusives for the first uh, for the opening of the cycle. Order 1886. That game look that trailer and that for that game looks so awesome. Oh my god, hunting down werewolves in London in 1800s, steampunk. Holy shit, that that is some cool shit going on there. So I'm really excited for that. Killzone. If you're a shooter fan, bam, you got your you got your game right there. Killzone. New Killzone's out. Drive Club. That's another dr racing game. They got at least two or three racing games on here. But let's go let's go and see because PS4 decided you know Sony's press conference decided to specifically highlight a several indie developers and let's see what they were bringing out the, 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 for the games. We'll talk about the developers, and we'll talk in detail about the games later. So they brought up uh, several different developers, and what they ended up showing was a lot of things like Don't Starve, which was an open world, randomly generated, where a game where you're just going to die constantly. I, I'm going to go into more detail later. I'm just working on the press conference. Mercenary Kings, which is basically like, uh, it looks like a Metal Slug game. If you've ever played that in the arcades or on your Xbox Arcade or PS4, play, PS3 game. Because it just looks like an old Metal Slug, but it's very interesting. It's a new new art design for that. Octodad, which I thought was hilarious. You're playing as an octopus who got married to a human. you got to trick everybody into thinking that you're an actual human being instead of an octopus. It sounds stupid and ridiculous, but it, it looks like it'd be lots of fun. Um, Secret Ponchos, which is like a top-down top down shooter where it's just a top-down shooter with a Western theme to it. Raised Dead, which is, which you're a zombie trying to figure out why you died. Oddworld New and Tasty is a remake of Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, but it's been a while since I've seen a puzzle platformer game that... It was that interesting and that well done in its art design, which makes me happy why they would do an HD remake. Galaxy, which is just a, you know, just a shooter, a space shooter, 2D space shooter. They, I don't know, for indie games, PS4 decided to go, uh, go ahead and outline and put out front their indie game market, which says that we're going to support the independent, independent developers 
and we're going to get you creative, innovative games on our system. Xbox One's did not the, the press conference for the Xbox One didn't outline any indie developers. I don't think if they did, it was very minimal. So it's it's just the difference between offering a variety. Sony came out and offered such a large variety of games for you to be able to purchase on their PS4 that it's just the right system if you are a true gamer and you don't just play one type of game. I know I know the phrase true gamer may offend some people, but true gamers are people who enjoy the community, who enjoy the culture of gaming so much that they are willing to try different things in it to further benefit it. Um, Assassin's Creed 4, another sequel, but they took this one in a different direction. They're going to go ahead and go with the pirate theme, which is perfectly fine. I haven't seen many games about pirates lately. I've seen a lot of games about ninjas, and I've seen a lot of games about soldiers, but not many games about pirates. So having a stealth game where you're a pirate might actually be pretty cool. Watch Dogs. The Watch Dogs is the big one. They even had a full-on demo ready to go. It was it, it, it. That game just looked amazing. You can hack anything. It's gonna be basically it's gonna mix grand th things from Grand Theft Auto with basically. I'm trying to think of a game where you do a lot of hacking with Deus Ex. Deus Ex. You're gonna be hacking everything. That's gonna be your primary mode of getting through the game. You can shoot things, sure, but they, the developers even said that if you get caught by the police, you're going to get busted. Unless you can use your hacking abilities to get out of it. Plus, they had like a mobile player on an iPad who can help you out by calling in things on your map to stop police cars from coming in, to knock out the helicopters flying at you. That game just looks so cool. It looks so complex and so innovative that I w honestly, if... It came out only for PS4. That would be the selling point for the system for me. I would buy the PS4 for that game alone. Not to mention that that game alone. That game alone, plus all these other amazing games that they got coming out. This great variety. So I mean, PS4 this year came out with the gaming market and said, "Hey, our system is for gaming. Our system. We're gonna cater to gamers, and that's gonna be what what we're gonna focus on." But let's go ahead and start talking about the two systems as entertainment platforms. Xbox One came out as an entertainment platform, and it's coming bundled with Connect. It's going to be able to allow you to watch Netflix. It's going to allow you to stream things on YouTube, just like a, you know, just like the Xbox 360. PS4 is going to come out with the same thing, and they both pretty much evenly match outside of the console thing outside of the gaming thing so they both have the same amount of netflix the same amount of flickster no flickster was a playstation thing basically on this uh, xbox one press conference tried to focus on games whereas playstation's press conference focused on all aspects of their system and i think they just did a better job of it because i was Honestly, I can't even remember a piece of information from Microsoft's conference about how it would maintain its status as an all-in-one entertainment system. Whereas the PlayStation 4 brought up the Flickster thing, the Sony Pictures thing, they had their their Sony Indie Market, they had all their game, all their exclusives, all their cool games that are coming out. It's just Sony did such a better job of providing the consumer with the idea that they would have a higher value if they bought their system. So let's talk about price. $399 for the PS4, whereas Xbox One will be releasing at $499. I think part of the $499 price is the fact that it has Connect automatically bundled with it, which I think is a dumb idea. Nobody wants to connect for the most part. It's a very it's a very casual gamer kind of thing, but it also requires you to have 10 feet of space in in a room. With on uninterrupted space, like you, for me in, in this apartment here, I would have to move my couch to be able to even use the Connect effectively. Whereas the PlayStation had, PlayStation Four did not come out with its 
it with any kind of motion sensor stuff that that they were trying to bundle with it. It is just a system, and it's going to release for three ninety nine, four hundred bucks, or and this is a hundred dollars less than the Xbox One. Uh, the Xbox One so far. It just looks like it's not going to offer as much value when it comes to gaming as the PlayStation 4 because it doesn't have as much variety, and it doesn't have as much. It didn't have as much focus on anything outside of the crowd that they're already selling to. If they were trying to grab other markets, they Microsoft just failed. Sony ended up taking some of Microsoft's market this this time at E3 based on the price alone. They got two camps when it comes to markets. You got Loyalist to Sony, loyalist to Microsoft, and you got your Nintendo people, but we're not going to count them because Nintendo just sells Nintendo. They're not trying to expand their market very much right now. They're just trying to keep the market that they have. So you got Sony and Microsoft, and you, these two competing companies trying to steal consu consumers, customers from each other's markets. Well, you got the loyalists, which are already going to buy your system no matter what, and then you got the people in the middle. The price alone will shift the balance to Sony's favor, because having $100 less, considering that most consumer ideas are based on price, having a slower price is automatically going to sell your system a little bit more. It's, and now let's talk about value. People will pay you a little bit more for value if it, the marginal benefit of the value is greater than the price that you're increasing. So Xbox One came out with a hundred dollar extra price tag with less games announced it at the press conference i know they reversed their decision but we'll talk about that later we're just going to talk at the press about the press conference at the press conference people were having questions about the drm requirements where you're just going to have a digital format you're going to have to jump through hoops put in codes authorize check in every 24 hours it just seems like the extra money was not going to be worth the extra hassle you would have to do to play your games. Whereas the le the amount of money that you're paying less for the PlayStation, plus all these extra games, plus you can trade in your used games, is just a better deal. It has more value for less price. And anybody who does a marginal marginal cost, marginal benefit analysis in their consumer decision there was is just going to automatically go PlayStation 4's better option. So... What am I gonna What am I gonna do? I'm gonna go buy the PlayStation 4. Why? Because I can get more value out of it, out of it, not only in the short term on the on the hundred dollar less price tag, but in the long term, I'm gonna have all these exclusives that I can try out for if, in the first you know quarter of the cycle. I'm gonna have the ability to trade in my games, get money back for games that I'm already done with, and be able to trade them for newer games, and I'm also going to be able to buy indie games on their on their market. I'm going to be able to stream all my movies. I'm going to be able to check out free movies and stuff like that. They're going to give me free games on their market if I if I sign up for their PlayStation Plus, which costs the same as a Xbox Live. I have rarely seen a decent free product on Xbox Live. So all these things just lean towards Sony as being a better better way to go this year. So at the E3 press conferences, Sony won. Everybody's saying Sony won, but I'm just exploring why they would have won. They came out more pro-consumer than everybody else. They Microsoft came out super anti-consumer. They were gun ho with their DRM policies at, toward, into the press conference, which later they ended up you know reversing the decision, but. I think by the time that they reversed their decision, it already damaged their reputation a little bit and it's probably going to affect their costs a little bit later. Um, let me think about this real quick. Uh, Sony, I think, is just going to be the better value this year. $100 less price tag, more games. And they didn't come out being dicks about the used games. They said you can trade your used games as long as it's a physical copy kind of hard to trade a digital copy. Um, I can talk about that later. You can actually trade digital copies. It's actually legal to be able to trade digital copies if you look at the laws. You, all you'd have to do is basically trade your license with somebody or sell your license to them and have the program removed from your computer automatically. So this year, Sony came out 
you know, came out strong. They they came out punches going. They uppercut the shit out of Microsoft at the press conferences. And what does this mean? What does it mean that Sony came out pro consumer versus Microsoft coming out as anti consumer? Coming out as anti consumer with all these extra things and the high price tag on things. Basically, Microsoft catered their press conference not towards gamers, but towards their shareholders. People who are businessmen and they're trying to make a profit off of providing you with less. A company, ideal, an ideal company goal would be able, it would be for them to be able to sell you something for $100, but it's just a bunch of dust. Better yet, nothing at all. Microsoft would like to sell you $100 worth of nothing, whereas Sony has actually offered a product. Microsoft's touting the service side of it, which you cannot really trade a service. You can only, you can only license out that service to, or contract out that service to a consumer, whereas Sony has offered up a physical product. So Microsoft was catering to its shareholders, trying to show that, hey, we can make a lot of profit on this if we cut out the entire used market. Whereas Sony said, we're going to make a profit off of this, and we're not going to cut the used market because it, it will negatively affect our company reputation and probably our business. If you cut out the used game market, people will be trading in and won't be tra trading in games to buy new games. And uh, I'll talk about more about that later. So for now, I'm just going to sign off. If you want to watch more of these videos, I will start posting more videos about these new games coming out of Catch Em News. I'll talk about them and why you should be interested in them. Why should you spend your money on the next generation of games? It'll be a fun, a fun thing to do. So I'll get back to Let's Playing again once I can get my desktop shipped up here. It'll be a while though, so no expectations. I'll give you a date in a minute it starts getting shipped though. If, it, if I can't have it shipped, if it's going to cost too much, I'm a student, I don't have much money. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'll get back to Let's Playing as soon as I can, but for now I'm just going to provide you all with news and my opinion. Leave your comments below. If you don't like my opinion, that's fine. If you think you, got, if you, can, think you can do a better opinion, leave a comment. If you think you can do a better analysis, just leave a comment or leave a video response. I'll watch your videos. I got time. I got time when semesters aren't on, no studying. And even when semesters are on, I'll be presenting news every day. So this is Tyrant Rex signing out. Take it easy, have a nice day, and keep gaming, folks.